Welcome my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peeps, my peoples. Peep squad is in the building, baby. We're going to the top, to the top, baby. We're going to bring others with us. So please become a part of the notification squad. Peep squad, hit that notification bell, baby. Know each and every time I drop a video, tell me what's on your mind. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Season 9, Episode 6. It's going down, so I guess Miss Kiyomi thinks she's the HBIC and she He's happy to be running around town with Shooter like he is some prize. Like, you know, mm, his wife didn't want him. Ciara didn't want him. But Ciara's playing them games like she do still want him because BK is out here in these streets doing what he want to do. And that's why she cried when she thought that she was pregnant by BK. Oh, no, she don't want to have no baby by BK because he ain't faithful and he ain't loyal. Just like Shooter. And we got Kiyomi out here with Shooter acting like they are number one. <laughs> like they are... <laughs> king and queen of the south like what's going on kiyomi you ain't got no prize you should be embarrassing whoever is kiyomi's you know manager or people that's putting her up to this bullshit like why you why you guys hurt this girl career she don't look good with this dude this don't look like some 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 good shit for her like come on who's gonna take kiyomi serious talking about she's a hbic of some no name dude that nobody knows that's on this show playing around and acting up he won't even go to court for sierra you know the way he did Ciara messing with her employees and messing with everybody else that's under the sun getting this one and that one pregnant you know what I mean his house is not even in order so Kiyomi what you looking for a daddy what's going on and you might want to look for a new daddy because you know Shooter is worrying about other things he's worrying about his reputation and how people perceive him so let's just get into it let's talk about the situation but we're gonna get to Kiyomi and Bow Wow a little bit later because Kiyomi done changed she done took over a whole new leaf at first she was jealous she was insecure she didn't want Bow Wow with nobody now she's in a relationship where it is open open to who <laughs> open to who like you got an open relationship so you laying down with school and letting him lay down with other people y'all laying down together I was like you guys acting like corona and diseases ain't out here in these streets mm -mm -mm. So it is what it is. I guess if you can't beat him, join him, Kiyomi. So it seems like that's what she's doing. So let's just get into it. Let's talk about the situation. So we have, you know, Miss KK. She's feeling a certain type of way. She's like, you know what? I'm not liking this. I'm not liking this situation. And, um, you know, she wants you, her, her, she wants her stepdaughter to basically tell the truth and tell everybody what's going on in this situation. You know, basically for Cheyenne to actually let her brother know that she is messing around with none other than Mr. Shooter. And so she's not feeling that situation at all. I was like, I know she's not. You know, KK was like, yo, girl, you running around town. You doing business with this man. And your brother don't even know that you guys been sleeping together for almost two years. And been doing a damn thing. And so Cheyenne doesn't see nothing wrong with it. And she thinks that it's okay. We're keeping it a secret. We're keeping it private. Like, why are you doing all that, girl? A man want to keep you secret and keep you private. It's because he's out here doing something. He don't want nobody to know what he's doing and when he's doing it, how he's doing it. And he don't want his business out in the street because he's out here doing ungrateful and unrighteous things out here. <laughs> so, anyways, now... Mr. You know, Scrap, he finds out he's feeling a certain type of way. And KK, basically, she exploded. She let everybody know what's going on. She let her son know that your sister's out here, you know, giving it up free, making her money on the corner. You know, KK is feeling a certain type of way because KK didn't get that money that she wanted. And I was like, damn, if Cheyenne is a real estate agent, why can't she pay her own cell phone bill? Oh, I said cell phone bill. It's in um Miss KK name. So we find out why is it Miss KK name? It's because you know Cheyenne just graduated from real estate school and she just she's up and coming, and so she probably got some tuition bills, she probably got some college bills and everything else like that. So basically, she can't get the phone in her name yet, but she will one day. So anyways, Scrap is feeling a certain type of way. He's feeling like, damn, I should have known about this. I should have known what was going on. How come I'm the last one to find out? And how come you keeping me a secret? I'm doing business with this man and he can't keep it 100. And then KK. You know, she opened up the bag and she let Cheyenne know that Mr. Shooter got another woman. He's been prancing her around town while you over here being a secret baby. Now, you know, Cheyenne is feeling a certain type of way. She's feeling like, oh, no. 
KK is lying. She ain't telling the truth or whatever the case may be. And she was like, I want to know. I want to know. And then you have Scrap saying, like, I seen him around town. I seen him here, there, you know, basically. But he was like, if you wanted my protection, if you wanted to know what Shooter was doing, you would have kept it 100 with me. You would have told me what was going on. I'm your brother. I'm your blood. You're not supposed to keep me in the dark. You, you keep the dude out there in the street in the dark. You don't put somebody before your family, even though, you know, Cheyenne knew, you know, Shooter before she knew Scrap. So it is what it is. But that's her brother. And, you know, and she votes for him. Him so he can stay at her house and everything else like that but so scrap is feeling a certain type of way and mama kk she came in to do what she needed to do and we have miss spice she's feeling a certain type of way because she's been lied to and disrespected that's how she feels and she feels like carly red you know make promises and don't keep them and also shakana was supposed to come to jamaica and shakana was supposed for her birthday and, Sha and shakana was supposed to show her houses in atlanta and shakana did not keep her word because you know spice really need a place to stay with her kids because she's bringing her kids to atlanta because you know she's out here making that money she's doing what she do as a single mother and she is upset with shakana and she's not feeling shakana and we know next episode she's gonna be trying to fight shakana and shakana gonna be running because shakana might got a big mouth but she ain't trying to throw no blows with nobody i don't blame her who want to be fighting on tv they don't get paid enough to fight <laughs> so we get to this situation and you know the ladies are on their ski trip they're doing the damn thing bambi knows she's pregnant but she's faking like she don't know so the ladies are getting a pregnancy test and all this other good stuff and and it seems like carly red and spice are all ganging up on shakana basically trying to pick on her and knickknack her and stuff like that and point out stuff and basically be sarcastic towards her and throw things at her you know verbally and shakana's feeling a certain type of way she's feeling like she's being bullied but she's just being picked on and she ain't liking it but spice and carly red are you know they're rolling together baby because you already know carly red needs somebody to have her back because she's getting mushed in the face she's being attacked all different times so she can find a girl that's gonna roll with her and fight for her she's gonna be all right so they take a pregnancy test and then we have you know sierra she thought that she might have been pregnant because bam beat them played a joke on her a prank and you know she couldn't even cry with that plastic surgery she she didn't she looked like a muffin she didn't even look real i was like damn she couldn't really get them tears out her cheeks wasn't moving her lips wasn't moving it's like her face was frozen in time i was like damn girl you done did too much plastic surgery i mean it was just like damn why <laughs> Like, what's going on? So, she thought she was pregnant by that no-good man, BK. It seems like, you know, Sierra always running into a no-good man. But it seems like Kiyomi Leslie needs to be on this ski trip when these women started talking about how no good their men are and how they've been abused physically and verbally and basically all the stuff that you got to go through to keep a man that don't even want to be kept and don't want to keep you, but he just want to pull you out the box when he needs some roll over for JJ. So we have that situation, but miss sierra is okay that she's not pregnant by bk because she's gonna find out next episode he is in the he's in a jacuzzi he's a, he's somewhere chilling with some other woman he don't got time for sierra we could have told you a long time ago sierra that bk wasn't the one but you wanted to bring his no good ass back in your picture you needed a storyline you could have paid anybody off the street to be your friend or be your so-called boyfriend i don't know why you're running with bk with his lying ass so moving on from that situation shakana she breaks it down she gets real these women don't know how it is out here in these streets you want this man with money you want this rapper you want these millionaires you know how they gonna treat you what you gotta go through to get it what you gotta go through to be next to him what hoops you gotta jump through because ain't shit in this world for free baby ain't nothing as well for free and you ain't gonna be living off somebody from free you gonna have to please them and satisfy their needs whatever their needs is and then he gonna mistreat you and dog you because you know what you a part of his payroll he gotta pay you so you're his employee you might think you his wife you might think you his girlfriend but you're his employee and she was like, look how Stephen J did Mimi. Mimi was like, yeah, look how he did me. Look how he did me. And then Shekana was like, he done brought that stripper and, you know, Jocelyn and all this other stuff. And then you have Spice. She's telling her story too as well. And they're talking about how they've been abused and mistreated and dogged out. It's been so bad for Mimi. Mimi ain't went back to the eggplant after Stephen J. Mimi ain't, ain't jumped on no hot dog, no sausage, no nothing after Stevie J. You know, she straight went to, you know, females. She's like, uh-uh, I ain't doing this again. 
So, Kiyomi should have been listening and maybe she could have got some word from Ciara how Shooter really is and could have been paying attention what was going on in the situation because these women are much older than her and they've been through there and they've been with celebrities and they've seen how celebrities rule and how celebrities got that money. But, you know, Shooter ain't got that type of money. Then you have Mrs., you know, Spice. She's basically talking about how dirty and low down her baby daddy was, how he abandoned her and left her with the kids. And luckily she got money. Luckily she got a career because if not, you know, her kids would have been starving out here in these streets or whatever. And so she's crying and everybody's feeling it. Sakana, you know, I don't know if Shakana is going to ever have a relationship with a man because she's been so hurt and so broken that I just wish Shakana would go get some therapy, go get some help, some real help so she can move on with her life and have a happy life and don't let the person and the persons that hurt her and mistreated her abusers have control of her life where she can't find love and be in a successful relationship because there's always someone there out there for you that is good for you you just got to learn how to pick them and know the signs and she's hurt her heart is broken so i think she kind of needs to heal from that hurt so we have that situation then we have jock jock is over here basically talking about his you know kendra is controlling everything he can't get a word in you know he's sitting on the toilet taking a dump and she's talking about this and that and basically he don't got no control so only thing he got control of what the guys are going to wear and that's about it so it is what it is but you know kendra is a good woman for him so he picked the right one and then we have Scrap. He comes through and he has a little situation because he wants to talk to Shooter about how come you didn't tell me that you was messing with my sister and you was doing this and you was doing that. And we're supposed to be be business partners and, you know, we're supposed to have trust for one another because we're going to be making money, putting money down on a table. And you can't be real with me and tell me what's going on with you and my sister. Like, that's some type of sneaky shit. That's not a good sign. And, you know... Scrap is saying what he got to say. And then, you know, Shooter being the pimp that he is, is basically, nah, dog, it's not like that. But you know what? Scrap is not a woman, so it ain't going to work, Shooter. So Shooter's trying to talk in his low, manly voice and trying to be a little sexy at the same time. It's like, yo, it ain't my fault, son. It's your sister's fault. She told me not to. When the last time Scrap ever, and when the last time Shooter ever listened and paid attention to what, what woman told him to do, how to do it, when to do it. He didn't want to tell her because he didn't want to tell Scrap because he didn't want to tell Scrap. He wanted to feel like he got the upper hand on something because Shooter's the type of dude that likes to know that at the end of the day, he got something on you and he outsmarted you and he's better than you in a certain type of way because he always feel like someone's trying to play him, someone's out there trying to get him. He's a street dude. He's an OG dude. And so basically, no, no other dude needs to know who I'm smashing, whether it's your sister or not, or whether, you know, we're doing business together. But rule number one, be truthful, be honest. That way, nothing can can backfire in your face and you know shooter don't understand what truth on being honest is if it slapped him in the face he wouldn't know so he's trying his bullshit and told me your sister told me not to tell you and you know scrap is like come on man this is some crazy shit and scrap is like you know what i don't know if i want to continue to do business with you point blank period because you know what you is not trustworthy what if there's profits what if there's things that are going on is, is shooter gonna be honest is shooter gonna tell the truth or shooter gonna run off with the bag so he can't be trustworthy if you can't tell me you banging my sister when you said she don't really mean nothing to you you know what i mean and you banging kiyomi and whoever else you bang you know what I mean so it's just like yo you're talking about you know you, you bros over you know females and you know shooter gives off that energy and he acts like that plenty of times you know on seasons he's been on here but yet he can't keep it real so shooter miss me with the bullshit but you know it's not it's not like shooter gotta do really you know really um put an effort in and convincing these women to do anything because they are signing up on a dotted line and they want to be one of shooter's women and they want to be one of his baby mama i mean i guess shooter done got it going on in atlanta because it seems like you know he done went through the cast and he done did his damn thing it is what it is and I'm pretty sure he's not convincing them in any other way. He don't got to say two words to them. They just falling in line. And we got Shekana. She's falling all over the snow. And but Shekana's feeling like she's being bullied by Spice and Carly Red. 
So it is what it is. And then we got Kiyomi Leslie. She's making spaghetti. The spaghetti looks terrible. It looks it looks awful. She got a half cut in onion. She only used a slice of onion to put in there. Like she didn't use no you only see an onion as what she used to put in the spaghetti. And she using ketchup. The last time, you know, I see somebody put ketchup in their spaghetti when they're making it <laughs> was on Wee TV <laughs> where um Mama June. Mama June was making spaghetti with ketchup. I was like, come on, like, you know, she She's cooking this nasty ass food first of all baby you need to go back to school you need to do something because if your storyline on this show as being shooters you know hi hbic and you proud of and you think that you accomplished something and you think that you you think that this man even value in any type of way you are just a storyline because sierra ain't his storyline no more and you just added along to the storyline so hopefully this is something your managers want you to do because you're all here bragging that you that like this that you in an open relationship with shooter <laughs> he he is not in an open relationship with you Kiyomi. he is just chilling with you shooter ain't claiming nobody and shooter you just his tv relationship his you know hollywood relationship and that's it and he's going back home to the girls that know how to fry some chicken and the girls that know how to cook some collard greens and some baked macaroni and some barbecue chicken and make some you know ribs and some catfish and stuff like that yeah he's he was looking at you like you point ketchup in there he was looking at you like what so but this is a good this is a good relationship for shooters you know career and trying to be in hollywood and be on tv too as well because you know shooters going to want to take this to a whole nother level you know once you're in a street game and you take over and you get into the hollywood the tv game you want to take over too as well so shooters looking at her like yo this shit is sloppy that you making but you know you can come through the house like so she is the hbic she's his bottom b and you know i guess she's cooking in his house and stuff like that like she thinks she's special you know last night there was somebody else probably over there cooking tomorrow we're gonna be somebody else over here cooking but she said she don't care but when she was with Bao she cared a whole goddamn lot who Bao was with what Bao was doing so you know Shooter was like basically this is girl I was messing with her name is you know Cheyenne or whatever the case may be she went to real estate school and then she got her degree and while she was doing that and real estate school we kind of like fell off because she had to focus on her education so you know you end up coming in the picture and then you know I scooted back with her like two, two months ago and it wasn't even that good no more it wasn't the same feeling and you came through so you my girl so basically he's telling you if you if you make something out of yourself and you strive to be better and you know you can't juggle him and making your life better then he's gonna put you on hold and throw a whole new woman into the game and act like you don't mean nothing but he was with Cheyenne for two years Cheyenne went to go get her life better and she's actually helping him out you know with getting properties and stuff like that but yeah he don't appreciate her he don't value her same way he don't appreciate you Kiyomi and value you you are just a TV project for now. So hopefully you know that too as well. And you guys are working together on that. But it's not a good look. Especially... When you branding yourself, people are gonna be looking at you like, ah, let, let me let me see if I can find somebody else, you know. And you got everything, you got the looks, you got everything that Hollywood would want, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. And so Kiyomi makes this food for you know <laughs> for shooter. Shooter don't look like he touched it. Kiyomi's the only one eating that shit. It looks like dog food. It looks like slop. Actually, dog food looks better. The little kid was like, I ain't eating that shit whatsoever. <laughs> And so we get to the situation where Jock is getting ready to throw his party. You know, his little club thing. I know Jock Club is hurting right now with the coronavirus. So the lady with the blonde hair is Jock, you know, event planner. He done had her. Jock has been around too as well. And then we find out that Jock has had, you know, Cheyenne too as well. And I guess, you know, Scrap is finding out his sister has been around in these streets. She's been out here giving it up and doing it and doing it while. And so, you know, Scrap is basically saying, like, oh, I want to see your boyfriend. Like, you know, know was he my, like, brother-in-law? So, Scrap is being a little asshole <laughs> about the situation, basically making fun of it or whatever the case may be. So, it is what it is. And then, you know, Cheyenne was like, oh, it's a secret. He was like, you don't got to be no secret no more, little sis. And so, we have Erica Mena and, you know, Safari. They come through. And, you know, they serve, they serve no purpose as usual. And then moving on from that situation, <laughs> Mr. Um, Shooter walks in the door and he's with Kiyomi and matching outfits. I was like, damn, if, if you was really his bottom B word or whatever the case may be, he would make sure that, you know, you want, nobody would even be coming at you. Nobody would be arguing at you because what he would have did if, 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 um, 
a shooter was real about his shit, he would have told Cheyenne what was the whole situation, what was going on up and down. But he wanted to spare her feelings and he knew that Cheyenne wouldn't be for this bullshit. Like she wouldn't want to be his side piece, his side this, his side that. Because at one point in time, she was his main woman until she went and got an education. And so he probably said, you know, it's no use for me controlling her, but I can control you, Kiyomi, because you thirsty and you looking for a come up. And, um, and he's thirsty too, and he's looking for a come up so we can come up together. So basically, there is, you know, a little situation. Cheyenne, she's upset, she's mad. You know, Kiyomi's in there, she's smiling. She was like, You want to talk to, you know, shooter, you can talk to me. You know, we can talk to each other, but my man don't go nowhere alone. How you doing? You too cute to be arguing, you too cute to be mad. And so basically, Kiyomi is fanning the fire. She got a fan and she's fanning that fire because she already knows how Cheyenne feels because the shoe is on the other feet because we already know Kiyomi done felt like the way Cheyenne felt when she was dating Bow Wow and she was dating other people. So now she feels like she got the upper hand that she ain't the hurt woman. She feels like she's taking power. You know, she's taking her womanhood back where well, you can't hurt me and you can't break me because you know what? I know what's going on even though she ain't happy with it. Even though that's why she's going to be crazy crying even though that ain't something she want because when she sat down with the therapist with Bow Wow she wanted a monogamous relationship she wanted to have children she wanted to live together she wanted to have like a pure relationship and now she done changed to the dark side she's ready to be the bottom b word and she's ready to introduce and meet all the women that Rod is sleeping with like that like that's gonna really happen and so Cheyenne is feeling a certain type of way. She's upset. She's mad. You know, she was like, I want to talk to you right now. She would have come over here. And Cheyenne was like, he can't go nowhere without me. And then she was like, what's going on? And so she's upset. She's pissed. And she's trying to, you know, get at Cheyenne. She's upset because Cheyenne, I mean, Cheyenne's upset because, you know, Kiyomi is fanning the fire. She's feeling a certain type of way. She was like, girl, why are you trying to rub your shit in my face? You know what I mean? I just want to talk to him real quick. If Shooter was about that, Shooter would have been like, you know, shot, you know, um, Kiyomi. Kiyomi, I love you, but we know he don't. But you know what? Hold on. Let me just talk to her because she don't know what's going on. So the way that Shooter is doing Cheyenne is the same way he's going to do Kiyomi in the future. When he meets somebody else that he feels like should be that number one and Cheyenne ain't going to know about it. I mean, and Kiyomi ain't going to know about it. So, you know... <laughs> It's going to happen like that. And so they almost get into an altercation. And so Cheyenne is, you know, trying to get at Kiyomi. Kiyomi takes off her shoe and throws it at Cheyenne. Cheyenne's crying. She's heartbroken. And now she knows that KK was right. And now she's heartbroken because she didn't know that Shooter was with another woman. Shooter's been lying to her. Shooter ain't being honest. And Kiyomi knows that Shooter has been lying to her and hasn't been, hasn't been honest. So that's why she's upset because we've seen Kiyomi wild out and go crazy when she thought Bow Wow was with this one about why I was with that one you know what I mean so I guess the shoe is on the other feet and it's gonna be what it's gonna be because you know Kiyomi on um, growing up hip-hop she was she was upset when Bao looked at anybody when Bao talked to anybody she was just upset at everything Bao did she didn't want Bao at the club she didn't want him taking pictures with people she didn't want him walking around with people she wanted him home every night she wanted to go to every event that Bao Wow went to she wanted to go to the club appearance with Bao she wanted to be there she wanted to be that number one she always argued with him when people liked his video or when people liked him and sent him messages i mean she was going crazy i mean the jealousy was insane she wanted to get married they went to therapy she wanted a relationship so now she's with shooter She's with Shooter and she's just like, you know, he can have anybody he wants to. He can have anybody that he wants to. I was like, girl, you wasn't saying this not too long ago. So I guess you changed up. I did Bao hurt you that much where now that you, you putting yourself down on a, you putting yourself down where you with a man that could be with anybody else not going to give you his undivided attention, who can't be faithful, who can't be loyal, who can't invest in you or anything else like that, and who can't even take your feelings seriously because every night he's going to be with another woman. So how how are you and him going to grow together just because he's being just because he's telling you he's sleeping with that one this one he ain't going to tell you if he's falling for that person he ain't going to tell you none of that he's just playing you and before you wasn't going for that but now you are now Cheyenne it's like, I mean, now Kiyomi's like, you know, I I'll take it, whatever. I guess, Bao, you really did a number on her. Bao, you need to pay for her some counseling because look what Kiyomi's doing now. I mean, she was wiling out on you. So all of a sudden now it's okay. I was like, Lord have mercy. What's going on with this situation?
It's like, damn, Kiyomi, what's going on? I mean, like, damn, you letting this dude <laughs> play you like that? And it seems like you want to show more of yourself, more branded, because you've been on two reality TV shows so far, and now we're getting to see a, a, a the scandalous side, a scandalous side of you of being hurt and being misused and being mistreated. And it's like, damn, you down for that. And it just seems like, you know, whoever's your manager, who's ever producing you is doing wrong by you because basically they should be showing your acting skills because it seems like on Instagram, you're trying to show some skills of acting and you could be more of empowering women and basically, you know, showing your talents that you do have, but we're not seeing any talents. We're seeing the same old washed up, you know, situation that Stevie J did, you know, when it comes to Jocelyn and the rest of the guys on Love and Hip Hop, you know, franchise. So you guys Tell me what you think. Peace. I'm out. Much love to all my peeps and my people. Kiyomi, wake up, baby girl.